Hello, and welcome to Character Class. Today, today we're going to take a closer look at matter. That's right, we're going on to the next sphere, the uh, sphere of matter, the sphere that is the uh, ballywhack of the Sons of Ether, the crazy mad scientist types. Uh, one of my personal favorite traditions. Now, as always, um, we're going to be looking through the book and delving a little bit deeper into the sphere and what each level does. Only the first five, because I'm not getting into Archmage spheres. Those are a little bit, uh, a little bit too esoteric uh, for my uh, usual delvings. So, without further ado, we'll go to level one. Level one sphere of matter is, as with most of them, your sensory sphere. Matter perceptions. The most basic understanding of matter gives a mage a clear insight into the nature of material objects. Uh, matter being the sphere that is basically anything that has a physical form that is non-living falls under the sphere of matter. Uh, by scrutinizing a pattern, the mage can tell not only how massive something is in terms of how much mass it has and what it's made of, but whether it's a composite, whether it's damaged in any way, how it might interact with other objects, and what could be hidden inside. Combining matter and entropy lets the magician sense weak points and identify the best means by which to break them. Forces tells what energy to bring to bear against objects. With life magic, the mage can determine the presence and composition of inert matter in living patterns, like piercings and implants. The use of more ephemeral spheres lends itself to scrying at range or determining whether a given object is actually a form of TAS. Uh, TAS being a physical um, a physical concentration of uh, quintessence, the uh, energy of magic. Now, for level one, there are two matter effects listed in the book. You have analyzed substance, which is any number of simple enchantments can be used to determine material properties. The mage could pick out gold from iron pyrite, which is otherwise known as fool's gold, uh, and tell exactly what a chair is made of, how much weight it can hold. So how you do this, um, it says mages do so in many varied ways. Sons of Ether and virtual adepts use their favorite tricorder style sensing devices. Hermetics often compare to known samples, look for disparities, Ecstatics just go with the flow and pick whatever feels right. So it lets you analyze the substance. It lets you know what something is made of uh, in terms of if it's multiple different types of materials and whatnot. Then you have fragments of dream, which sounds a little strange. Uh, dream speakers view all manner of fragments of the Earth Mother's dreams. By tapping such dreams, they can expand their perception of matter. The mage extends her senses beyond physical reality into pattern. She no longer sees matter in the same way. Instead of a brick wall, for instance, she sees its pattern in her mind's eye. This effect allows the mage to perceive things that would be unseen in physical reality. She could sense the contents of a room beyond a wall, or detect objects or structures that might otherwise be hidden, such as a false bottom of a suitcase. Really dense or complex patterns may be more difficult to penetrate. So this one uh, is also another form of sensory magic. It kind of allows the mage to not look at just what something is, but look at the pattern of it. And when you're looking at the pattern of something, uh, I like to, um, they make mention of the patterns that mages can see and sense um, in the other spheres. And I should have gone into this before now, but sorry. <laughs> the the patterns of something, I tend to think of it as um, almost like a constellation. If you ever look at constellations, you've got points. Uh, as they're usually drawn. You've got the points that are the stars and the invisible lines that are usually drawn between them to form an image. Uh, to form the, the basic structure of something. Um, I like to think of patterns as being similar to that. A, 
a certain weave and weft of lines and nodes uh, that form a, a pattern. You see? You see where I get it from? Um, and the patterns of things tend to be, uh, everything's different, but if you look at the pattern of, let's say, a concrete wall, and you look at the pattern of another concrete wall, those concrete walls are going to have different patterns, but there's going to be the same basic underlying structure. You could basically look and tell that is a concrete wall if you've already seen the pattern of a concrete wall. There are those base similarities that the differences are then built on. Uh, and the same goes for any other material element or any other living element. You look at the pattern of a human being with life magic, and you look at the pattern of another human, the same baseline pattern is going to be the same. There'll be differences piled on top, but you'll be able to know you're looking at a human. And as such, this tends to be used in sensory magic to determine, uh, you know, other supernatural creatures or... You could look at, for example, a wall that is actually uh, a hidden door. You can look at the pattern of that wall and you'd be like, that is a different pattern than the wall next to it. And know something is strange. Hence why that's done like that. Uh, level two, basic transmutation is level two sphere. The mage may transmute one substance into another without changing its shape, temperature, or basic state. Basic state being either a solid, liquid, or a gas. The object simply takes on a new composition at the mage's whim. Complex creations are usually more difficult, in some cases impossible. Usually mages are limited to creating or transmuting homogeneous substances. Uh, basically, meaning, basically meaning substances that are similar in basic state. For example, a block of wood into a brick of stone, for instance, but not into an alloy of gold and osmium because they have to be single elements. You couldn't do alloys of any kind, homogeneous. Uh, a hermetic mage might turn lead into gold alchemically. A courser could duplicate the miracle of turning water into wine, but a technocrat is more likely to convert simple elements like hydrogen to helium. And there's all kinds of other things you can do. Uh, only simple and inert forms of matter can be transformed at this level. You can't make radioactive elements. Doing so requires mastery, as such patterns shed their essence in the form of forces. Matter patterns also tend to have a rigid shape, and this shape cannot be changed with this base understanding. Of course, if the mage turns a rock into butter, he can sculpt or melt it easily. Rare materials are also hard to create. Metaphysically, such matter is a precious substance, not easily found or made, which reflects in the difficulty of magical duplication. And all kinds of interesting, fun things you can do. Uh, we've got two different uh, effects here. Melt and reform. The mage turns an otherwise inviolable object into a similar but much more accommodating item. The mage could grab a stone wall, briefly render the stone into clay, easily shaping it with his hands until the effect ends. Or he could turn a statue into butter and let it melt before changing it back. Meaning the wall or the statue has then changed shape while it was something else, and then is reverts back to stone in its new shape. So you can get around the, uh, the unable to alter shape by doing things like that. Uh, the other one is straw into gold, like Rumpelstiltskin legend. Uh, the mage can weave base matter into a valuable substance. It remains a homogeneous material, but takes on the qualities desired by the mage. Vogel, vulgar will workers may literally turn tears into diamonds and straw into gold. More subtle magicians could improve the quality of an existing object, or accidentally discover that an object is more valuable than it first appeared. In this fashion, a mage can turn cheap beer into a decent stout, make generic brands seem of higher quality, and cause an ordinary item to actually be made of something valuable. Uh, this is one of the uh, spheres that can be abused uh, 
because at level two, you can already make diamonds or gold or other base elements. I believe platinum is a base element and extremely rare. Um, probably more successes than turning uh, lead into gold and turning something into platinum. But the simple fact remains that because of this uh, low level, only level two uh, sphere, you can do this at, you can, as a character, uh, abuse this and just start making yourself rich, making yourself able to buy whatever you want, whatever you need. Um, so storytellers beware, uh, and players also beware because storytellers are on the lookout for this uh, eventually, and they may uh, smack the hand uh, that is uh, delving into the cookie jar. <laughs> All right, on to number three. Number three is alter form. Although matter patterns are resilient, they are not inviolable, and a mage with enough experience can reshape matter as he desires. This level of skill lets the mage sculpt the object mystically, changing its form or even compressing or expanding certain elements of its material properties. You can increase an object's density, disperse it into gas, or he can just take make it take on a different silhouette. Broken materials can be rejoined and matter made whole once more, or the mage can pull things apart, separate them into components, or make mixtures of matter. So, with this, we've got two, uh, I believe it's just two. Uh, yes, two of them. One is destroy structures, which is you use your knowledge of matter patterns to break down structures by shredding their patterns. This effect resembles sculpture, which is the next one, but the mage simply breaks down a pattern as quickly as possible. The mage can destroy nearly any simple object. He can tear up concrete, steel and cloth with ease, equal ease. However, advanced compounds might be too difficult for the mage to unravel and require a higher level of skill. Note that the material is not reduced to nothingness, it's simply scattered and torn apart. Uh, you can also turn an object into some other sort of inert substance and go from there. Doing so can be useful if the mage is dealing with matter that won't be destroyed just by dispersing it like poison gas or acid. So if you've got poison gas, you could use matter, uh, level three, to uh, take it and turn it into a liquid so that it just all goes splash. You could turn it into a solid. So all of those little things turn into solid poison pebbles and just scatter on the ground. So it's not a gas anymore. You're not breathing it in. You've essentially not made it go anywhere, dispersed it into nothingness. It's still there. You've just changed its form. So you can do neat little things like this. Uh, sculpture is the, third, the other one. By changing the shape of a chunk of matter, the mage can easily sculpt a substance without bothering to transform it like Melton Reform does. The mage simply grabs the pattern mystically, whether by pantomiming the sculpture chanting its name of power or whatever, which falls under paradigm, and yanks it into the desired shape. The object responds and takes on the appropriate form. Sculpture may require multiple successes for very large or complex objects. So you could, theoretically, with a sculpture, take a steel bar, just a straight, not no, maybe not steel, an iron bar, because steel is an alloy, and I think you need level four to start doing the alloys. But you could take a chunk of matter, say a, a iron bar or a wooden uh, block, anything like that, and you could take a hold of its pattern and mystically twist it around so that it becomes something else. You could turn a simple block of wood into an ornate little carving without actually discarding any of the wood. You simply reshape it. Uh, you could do the same with iron. You could make it into a door handle, fashion it into a sword by simply uh, changing the pattern of this blunt instrument into a sharpened instrument. 
It wouldn't have a hilt or handle unless you fashioned one out of the metal. And even then, it's still metal. Uh, but you could do it. You can create that shape from it. Uh, and, of course, you can, as I said, with the poison gas, uh, you can change the, uh, the basic state of it from liquid to uh, solid to gas. Um, I don't know about plasma yet, because plasma is a form of matter, and I think that might be covered in Archmage Spheres. But it might be in higher of this. Let's check, because <laughs> we are on to the fourth one, complex transformation. By tearing out the detailed elements of combined matter patterns, an adaptive matter can rebuild complex patterns that rely on rare, complex material or on multiple independent pieces with different bases. Assuming that he has the appropriate mundane knowledge, knowledge is important, uh, the mage can easily make objects with moving parts or do the opposite in order to turn valuable equipment into useless lumps. Whereas a less experienced mage is limited to making simple items or patterns of a homogeneous sort, an adept, which is level 4, can create alloys, combinations of multiple types of matter, and other fine details. Both the level of detail and the complexity of the final object determine the difficulty of the effect. With forces or life magic, the mage can transform creatures or energies directly into complex objects. He can turn a canary into a golden clockwork songbird or a lightning bolt into a silver stylation. Stylization. Life magic lets the mage blend living and unliving matter, making silk, fresh food, and the like. Prime energy can be used to conjure complex matter from nothing. More than one euthanatos has pulled a gun seemingly out of nowhere. Because guns are made of matter. You can create them out of nothing with a high enough, uh, high enough uh, successes. So those give us alloy, a level 4 effect. By grabbing two patterns and compressing them together, the mage makes an alloy out of solid objects. He can shove a chunk of wood into the middle of a piece of plastic, or blend two types of metal into a composite. Such an alloy still retains the properties of its individual components but it might have its own characteristics if it's mixed finely enough. That is, a chunk of wood stuck in a wall of plastic would still burn, but if the wood were diffused throughout the plastic, the wall might have a pleasing wooden texture while remaining fire retardant, although it could well give off poisonous smoke when it did catch fire. So think about that, taking two different materials and merging them together so finely that they take on characteristics of each other. Like with, for example, uh, metal and glass. If you were to merge metal and glass together, you could create a transparent uh, sheet that you can see out of, but has the durability of metal. So, almost bulletproof. Think about it. This is the kind of stuff you can do with level 4 magic. Uh, you also have Transformers is a level 4 effect. Complex and radical changes in composition let a mage know, let a mage with the appropriate knowledge alter the function of various devices. A mage could turn his wristwatch into a dart firing weapon or cause his stereo system to also house a telephone. There's almost no limit to what can be done, although the mage must have the knowledge necessary to build and use the device. This is where uh, knowledge comes in uh, for matter. Always have a lot of knowledge. Uh, such devices are just reorganizations of existing matter. So they must still conform to the general laws of the consensus. That is, the mage could cause his wristwatch to also have a dart firing mechanism, since someone could conceivably build such a device normally, but it wouldn't be able to also serve as a teleporter, because teleporting is something that the consensus doesn't believe in. That's something I may have to do an episode on, The Consensus, uh, which is kind of interesting and neat. Okay, so that's that. You can do a lot with level four, uh, complex transformation, uh, merging things together, uh, shifting things radically, literally creating objects out of matter with complex moving pieces. Uh, 
Level five, the highest level that we're covering, is alter properties. The highest matter arts allow a maze to rebuild the individual segments of a matter pattern at will. Instead of making base matter or objects of combined materials, the master can devise entirely new matter, setting its physical properties as desired. He can transmute normal matter so it has a different boiling point, specific gravity, or transparency. He can also create an object with a mass, density, and viscosity determined at whim independent of any sort of normal physical laws. The patterns of matter can be made to interact with other matter in unique ways, so the patterns may be explosive, acidic, or even immaterial to one another. With mastery of matter, the mage is not limited to the so-called laws of the material world. His creations can have whatever strength and physical characteristics he desires. Matter patterns can even be made that transform spontaneously, changing state or characteristics, or throwing off forces, radiation. So, with other spheres, a master of matter can build invincible armor out of prime energy, make devices that heal or harm living creatures outside of all normal expectations, and develop complex, rare, and lethal substances. We've got Alter Weight as a level 5 uh, effect for this. By manipulating the properties of an object's elemental mass, a mage can change it into a unique element that has a weight dissociated from its size. A tiny object can be given the mass of a car, or a car could be made light enough to be picked up. Great gas mileage, hell and strong winds. <laughs> Objects that are heavy for their size, super dense materials, tend to be stronger and more durable than the balsa-like constructions of hyper-light material. The level of success scored indicates how much the object can be tweaked in terms of density. With a couple of successes, the mage might succeed in changing its mass by 25%, while 10 successes could alter it by a factor of several times. So it could be altered like five times the uh, normal weight. Uh, now that's just an, an example of an effect, is alter weight. Matter association is the other five level effect. A master of matter can change how certain matter patterns interact with other patterns. If he decides to make a pattern unable to interact with others of a specific type, he may well get a material that's insubstantial to certain substances. Bullets could fire through body armor, and a coroner's tools could pass through dead flesh. The master can also make the matter take on properties of some other sort of matter or entirely new properties. So a piece of matter could be made superconductive, incredibly strong, and somewhat ductile, despite originally being a crumpled up ball of duct tape. Such massive transformations are, of course, generally vulgar and reserved for occasions where the mage needs a permanent special object. The successes score determine how much the mage can alter the nature of the object. With a few successes, might tweak the weight and interactive properties a bit, while many successes would allow the mage to reverse fundamental properties, make an inert substance radioactive, or vice versa. He could also swap around characteristics from multiple types of matter. So, with the level 5, you could take, um, for example, uh, rubber. You could take rubber, which is a non-conductive material. It is an insulator. You could take that and make it superconductive. You could take, uh, for example, mm, we'll say an inert gas and make it flammable. Something that like, um, what gas is, I, I cannot off the top of my head remember what type of gas is uh, non-flammable. But you could take one. Um, take one of these that's easy to get your hands on, uh, not on any watch lists, alter the properties to make it flammable, you use it in a flamethrower if you wanted to. You could do all kinds of stuff. Make matter, as I said, super dense, change the physical properties of it. So instead of merging glass and uh, steel to get a nearly bulletproof transparent window, you could just take steel and make it transparent. You could uh, 
take something that is like bulletproof, it's like steel, and give it the uh, consistency of cloth so that it moves like fabric, but still has the uh, protective properties of actual metal. So you could make yourself nice bulletproof clothing if you wanted to. You can do all kinds of stuff like that. You could take uh, ammunition in, in a gun and make it uh, super light so that when you fire it, it actually fires faster. All kinds of things you can do. A lot of the stuff I'm giving here are like combat things because those are the things popping into my head. But there's a lot of little things you can do with matter, especially when you're altering the, the density and the physical properties of it, making something uh, radioactive or inert. Um, so yeah, you could take plutonium, which is radioactive, and make it inert. You could shut off that radioactive property of it. Now, what that might do, you don't know. But there's tons of things you can do with matter. Um, but it can be abused by uh, certain players that like to uh, really get in there and niggle with the rules. Uh, so keep an eye on that, STs. Uh, and players out there, uh, try not to abuse the heck out of the rules. <laughs> It makes uh, it makes for no fun for anybody. Uh, but that's going to be it for this episode of Character Class. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, if you like what I'm doing, give that like button a tap. Give that subscribe button a tap as well if you haven't already, so you can be kept apprised of when I do new videos. And throw a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you guys like to use Matter for. Uh, what is your favorite little tip or trick that you like to uh, you like to use Matter spheres to uh, to pop up. Um, one of my favorite is simply to make a uh, turn a uh, wall or a section of wall from solid to gas. Be like, poof, walk through. What now? What now? <laughs> of course, if you do that and then turn it back, then hmm, yeah, it's going to be all over the place. But that's simply the way it goes. And you don't want to breathe any of that in because if you turn it back, when you have some of this gas breathed in, suddenly you have matter in your system, in your lungs. It's not good. Uh, so yeah, do all that. Throw those comments in the comment section. Let me know uh, what your favorite little tips and tricks are. And uh, until next time, uh, you all take care, keep playing games, and I will catch you on the flip side.